teachers, practitioners, and writers to come together to share some of their wisdom in this book so that together we may be of service to countless others in society at large. All six of us who have contributed to this project have a great deal of personal history and experience with the shaman's path. Hank and I have a dual role here. Throughout most of the book, our voices are merged, reflecting the unity as well as the flow of our shared wisdom and friendship across many years. As such, the narrative that forms the fabric of the book will be our collective voice. And yet we are also contributing members of the group of six, and we teach in our own way. So in those passages where we share our own unique ways of working, we will use our individual names to present our teachings. Here I would like to introduce you to Hank Wasselman, and then together in the introduction, we will share the format of the book and how to work with it. Preface from Hank Wasselman. In accepting Sandra Ingerman's gracious invitation to co-author this book, I was immediately aware as an anthropologist that an opportunity has been created to explore the dimensions and boundaries of an extraordinary subculture that has taken root in the Western world in our time, a community to which you most likely belong. We could think of it as the transformational community. And since the word transformational has become a buzzword in this time of change, there is something quite mysterious we should mention right at the onset. A new spiritual complex is quietly, yet definitively, taking form within the heart of this community. One that brings us to the subject that lies at the epicenter of this book, the path of direct revelation. This is the path on which each of us, as individuals, may directly engage with the great mystery of existence, however we may think of it bringing it into our everyday lives and, by association, into our relationships and our work in the world. This is the ancient, time-tested way of the shaman, the mystic, the visionary, the spiritual path that may take each of us straight into the experience of authentic initiation, a way that may guide us into the irreversible vortex of personal awakening that is referred to in the East as enlightenment, and in the West, as becoming God-aware. This is the path on which each of us may discover who and what we really are, gaining insights that may be quite in contrast to the scripts that society at large has handed to each of us to act out. In the process, we may discover that these scripts have suddenly become completely and utterly outdated. As Sandra and I begin to share our thoughts about this extraordinary social transition with you, my attention inevitably turns toward those parts of my life spent working as an anthropologist among the tribal peoples of Africa. For it was there, in the bush, among the indigenous traditionals hundreds of miles from the nearest road, hot bath, or cold beer, that I first stumbled upon this path more than 35 years ago. It happened through a series of spontaneous, dreamlike, visionary experiences that were intensely real and that became utterly life-changing. I was 30 years old then, a member of a scientific research expedition exploring the arid, eroded landscapes of eastern Africa's Great Rift Valley in search of answers to the mystery of human origins. In those days, I suspected that my fellow scientists were unlikely to be receptive to talking about these anomalous experiences. So I turned towards some of the African tribal men who were working with me. We had become friends across the years living in a tented safari camp in remote areas of southwestern Ethiopia, far from the tourist tracks. In my discussions with these men, I slowly discovered that they held a perspective that was quite foreign to my scientists' way of thinking about the world. Right at the core of their worldview lay the perception
That's enough for now.